Hiya, and welcome to Tykes TV. Uh, today I've got Dave on. Long time. Uh, people, I know people have been asking him about where is he. Uh, so I managed to get him on today for uh, preview at West Brom game coming up this Friday. So just on your over to Dave. Uh, welcome, Dave. Nice to see you back on, mate. Nice to be back on, Neil. Good to, good to get back on some uh, work with the channel. It's been, like you say, quite a while. But um, yeah, here we are again. Can't stay away. So up to now, it's been a pretty poor season. I think we can all agree on that. Uh, West Brom has visited on Friday, and who's, have, is Ishmael going to be coming back and haunting his day on Friday, do you think? Uh, well, I think anyone that's going to be realistic about things is going to say, yeah, because, you know, obviously they're, they're on a pretty decent run. Uh, they've had a pretty stable season, and um, they're picking up the points. Uh, they've won a lot of games, they've drawn a lot of games, I think they've lost four. Mm. And, you know, based on, um, I had a bit of optimism after the Huddersfield game, I thought we deserved to win that game and I thought some of the passing was nice and neat. Uh, we made some good chances, big improvements, and we've totally regressed at Preston. It were it was shocking on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, it couldn't retain the ball, didn't really create anything. There just looked to be no passion, no ideas. It was it's it's like one step forwards, two step steps backwards, and you know, it's not the sort of time we'll be facing a team like West Brom. So um mm. yeah, I think we're gonna be a... It's going to be a big, big ask on Friday. It's going to be a big ask. Yeah. One thing for me um, is that stuff we're going about on social media, obviously, uh, Poy likes to play this far, far at back system. But since the Huddersfield game, we've been playing three at back. And for things going about saying, because he hasn't got wingers and, you know, it's an unbalanced squad and that. But we've said this all along, haven't we? That we've got too many forward players, like attacking options. But it's like an unbalanced squad in midfield kind of thing, Dave, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's the, the team selection still, still baffles me. I still can't figure out. Um, first of all, I can't figure out who's picking the team. Mm. I don't think it's the coach. I think uh, it's someone upstairs that's doing that still. And um, it's that needs to stop. It needs to be the guy in charge needs to put his foot down and say, look, I'm picking the team. I'm going to play the players I want. And, uh, you know, it's like you say, there was four at the back against Huddersfield and that was... Probably our best, well, it was our best performance of the season. There's no probably about it. It was our, our best performance by a mile. And we've gone back to three at the back then, um, moving to five when obviously Styles and Britain get back. Yeah. And it was, it was complete rubbish on Saturday. It didn't work. It was, you know, you, you, you try something different. And you've, um, you've not got the win, you've got a draw. Uh, and you've, you've improved your performance. You know, and people have started talking, saying that the, the improvement's there. You know, the passing was much better. I mean, our passing at the start of the season was woeful. Mm. We couldn't string two passes together. The short passes were going astray. But some of the passes against Huddersfield were superb. And, you know, it's just completely reverted back to where we were after the Preston game. I just don't understand what's happened there. Mm. I'm thinking uh, with Moet going back as well, I think he's, I think he's going to boss that midfield, to be fair. Because I know we've got, like, such as your Palmers and your Bensons and Gomez in that, but... You mow it, I think he'll just get stuck into a tackle and our midfielders at minute, but just don't look like they get stuck into a tackle, look like they shine out in them. The only one that gets stuck into the tackles is is Woodrow and mm-hmm. um, Palmer does to a certain extent, but neither of them are very good at the, they're going in for the tackles there. Woodrow's timing was a bit off on on Saturday. I was um, I was watching it with the Preston commentary and they were shouting for a red card. It mm. wasn't a red card for me, it was a yellow card, but, you know, some referees are going to give that, so you've got to be really careful. Mm. Palmer worries me when he goes in for challenges because he's he's a bit slow in them. And he's yeah, He always looks like he's going to pick up a book in, same with Benson. We, we are missing that person bossing the midfield. Gomez is a good midfielder, but he plays too deep mm. for, for that sort of thing. He doesn't get forward enough. You know, he picks up the ball and he runs with it and he plays, he lays it off. But there's no, there's not, he's not this person that can create things like Moat can. He can ping the ball across to the left, ping the ball across to the right. You know, and I think when we do come up against Moat on Friday, it's going to be even more evidence of how much we miss him, you know, and how much we are lacking in midfield. Yeah. I'm thinking that as well because I know we recruited in Benson by the summer, but we never really placed that leadership on, on midfield. Um, and just going back to leadership. Uh, Woodrow looked like he might be missing that game due to a, a, an injury, I believe, where he picked up at Preston. Um, 
So it's like, there you go again, where you're going to be looking for a leader on, on pitch. You'd like to think it's going to be an Eli come back, but pff, I, I don't I don't even know where to go for a leader on pitch, to be fair. I don't, it depends who's pick, who's who, who's deputy captain. Is it Helic? I think it were Helic for like club captain kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it'd, be, it'd be interesting to see, and we do need that, that you know that leadership. You know, I'm not faulting Woodrow's effort, but I mean the effort was there on Saturday, but he just doesn't look. I don't want to say good enough at the moment, but he just. I, I just think he needs dropping. You know, it's it's, it's mm. harsh to say. You now he's not really done a lot wrong, but his performances this season have not been the consistency they were last season. You know, and I think you know maybe he has maybe he's been he, he might have been carrying an injury. You know, mm. watching the game on Saturday, he was talking to the physios quite a bit, and I thought he was going to come off in the second half on on a number of occasions. Yeah, but um, he kept on going. So maybe there is something there that's been you know niggling for a couple of weeks. He's been just been but, carrying um, it. Someone needs to step up, you know, and especially in a game like this. Um, Heli could be the one for me. You know, he, I think he, he's got the leadership qualities. Mm-hmm. Um, apart from that, there's no one in the team that I really think is is, is that vocal. Mm-hmm. Um, Just stand out and make, really get it back, scruff at neck, is there? Anderson might be a, another good, a good shout for it. I always like captains that can that play in defence. Mm. They can see what's going on, you know, in front of them. If you've got a striker, then you can't see what's going on behind you unless you're going backwards. Yeah. And I, I, I always think the best captains are the ones either that play in midfield or, you know, sit at the back in the back four or the back five, whatever you're playing. But, um, you know, we, whoever is captain on Friday needs to put in a captain's performance. Yeah. You know, when we've got to bounce back from this disappointment against Preston and, you know, put in that... Put in and show what we can do because we showed that against Huddersfield that we've still got potential. And Preston were there were nothing special on Saturday. We should have beaten them. We should have beaten Huddersfield. There's teams in this league that we can beat. You know, we're not the greatest team in the league. We're not the worst team in the league. The, 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 the table, it's not misleading, but it is. You know, we've mm. under Schlopp. It was it was horrendous football to watch. But I think with the players we've got, you know, getting play them right, we can we can easily push. Yeah. You know, to a 16th, 17th finish. You know, with the way we go at the moment, I'm not expecting that, but we are capable of doing that. You know, but someone needs to step forward now, and obviously, then we need to see what happens in January, which is a, another worry because people are going to come sniffing. There's been a, a few uh, decent performances from individuals, you know, and players that have been scouted over the summer that someone's going to come in for another look. So, mm-hmm. you know, we need to we need to pick up points while we can before. You know anything? Anything happens? I can't see him putting any money money into the club in in the January transfer window. It's going to be literally trying to hold on to your players and scrap what you can get. But yeah. you know we need to pick up points. But West Brom is not a sort of team you're going to go into feeling confident enough to pick up those points. No, I mean it's. I mentioned it in a video the other day uh, about some players that potentially been already linked. Styles has been linked with Burnley and Brighton, I believe. And be ironic if he went back to Berlin because that's where he started off as a young kid. Uh, Vita never got a look in. He looks like he's going back to Bayern Munich. So I think January transfer when is going to be key in recruiting to see if we can get some kind of a, uh, I said balanced, settled squad, but a fresh, fresh impetus in uh, just to try and drag his heart at Meyer because at the minute it's going to be like a rescue job, isn't it? For, because it gap already from bottom three to, you know, Cardiff's mm. and your Peterborough's arm here. It's already a, a rescue mission, uh, and we know what's going to happen with Ishmael when he turns up. What kind of football is going to play? Is going to play that I press, um, uh, long ball direct stuff. And you know, you'd like to think that we're going to be prepared for it, but who knows? Uh, because you know, we've seen it before, haven't we? When when we were doing it for Barnsley, well, look at the back end of last season when teams cottoned on to us when we started, you know, making a name for ourselves and we were on the brink of the playoffs. And teams started to take us more seriously, and obviously they picked up on how we we getting the points. And um, you know, it was the high press. It was Ishmael's style of football. Mm. And as soon as the uh, clubs caught on to that, they found a way of counteracting it. And you know, we, I don't want to make so much say we struggled towards the back end of last season, but we pegged back a little bit. You know, and it was a good start. Well, not a good start. It was a bad start. But it was after Ishmael took over. It was that period then till about early April, probably. Where we picked up the points, and you know, when we had that that good run, 
but then towards the end of it, clubs cottoned onto us and they just shut us down. Swansea mm-hmm. in the in the playoff semi-finals, they completely knew what they were doing, they had a game plan, and they executed it perfectly and completely trashed us out of the game. So we know what he's going to do. We've got to do what other clubs have done to us. And just going back to formation, uh, he's, he's going to be playing RE, RE does. Uh, what do you think we're going to be doing? Do you think it's going to be, do you think he'll go back to four at back or do you think he'll stop with his three? I have a feeling he's going to stop with three at back until he gets to the transfer window and he can bring his players in where he wants. But I don't know, Dave, to be fair. I don't know what he's going to do. Look, anyone knows what he's going to do. We know mm. that that team sheet's always a surprise. Whenever it comes out, you know, it's there's always at least one thing and they thinking, really? What did you make you know, a, uh, Clark do coming in? Ba- um, ba- baffle me. Ba- cause in my opinion, I, I don't think he's an attacking option. No, he's... He's frustrating. He's you know he's he's one of those players that's got the, the talent to create things, mm. but he doesn't he doesn't put himself about enough for it. He's got the potential to do that. He's lacking in the end quality for me. Mm. You know, apart from that goal against Brentford, but it was was it against was that was it against Blackburn where he had that that run and he completely muffed the finish. Maze run, didn't he? Yeah, a bit of He's got the potential yeah. to do that. You know, he's shown he can do that against, um, I think it were QPR away in that first half when we overran him. Mm. Um, he showed what he can do, but his end product let, let him down. Mm. And I just don't think he'd shown anything to me. Well, I don't think anyone's seen him play for a while before the Preston game. He was just, has he been on the pitch for... I mean, when was the last time he was on the pitch before the Preston game? It's been a while because he got he got uh, rested. It's like same as Sibic as well. It's a, you know, one minute he's in and the next minute he's just like out, oh, same as Moan, another player. It's like a lottery at the back though with the with the centre backs and each to know who's gonna pick. He always he's always gonna pick Anderson and Hellick. I understand mm. that because they're they're the two standouts. But then you've got Sibic, you've got Moon, you've got Kitchen. Mm. And um I, th- I think it depends against who you're playing. Um if they've got strong, um, fast, if they've got fast attackers, then you're going to put Civic in for his speed, you know. And if not, if they're like big ones, you're going to put someone in like Kitchen, maybe. But Adore didn't do anything to justify a start for me, mm. based on the fact that we haven't seen him. He's obviously done something in training that's impressed the manager, yeah, yeah. or has impressed Conway or whoever's picking the team. Mm. But um, no, it's. It, it's not. Like, it's not even a settled side, is it? We don't. It's not even. That's set, your problem. Set, it, uh... That's your problem. You know. You know. You, you have a team. I mean, I. I live in, I've lived in Cardiff for years, and I had a season ticket at Cardiff for, for ten years. And barring injuries, you always knew what the starting eleven was going to be. Hmm. Always knew. The managers picked their team, and they stuck with it. And the fact that we're chopping and changing around all the time, it doesn't give the team a chance to gel. Yeah, you know, if you're playing week in, week out with someone, then you form a, then you form a, pl- a partnership, and relationships on the pitch. Mm. Everyone knows what everyone else is doing, and it's evident in our play that the, the communication between the players it, it's it's not there. Yeah. And it's probably not there because you know they're not playing with each other week in, week out, and you know you, you need to you need to know you start in eleven. You know, any manager needs to know he's starting in eleven, and like we we don't because it's it's always changing. I mean, when was the last time we had the same starting eleven in two consecutive games? I can't remember it. I don't think. I don't think it's happened this season. If it has, it's happened a rare rarity. Like you under can't this... keep chopping and changing. You you need to know you're starting eleven. You need to stick with that. Yeah. You need to know your best your best players that you want to start. And barring injuries or suspensions, you stick with that team. Well, under Ishmael, and people say, "Oh, yeah," but when Ishmael were here, he were chopping and changing. But the only the only things he changed were either. He were, he, Anderson and Elliot were at back and Sol Bauer and, and when it came to the latter end of the season Sol Bauer again repl- uh, replaced with Sibic and your front three were all constantly changing round but resting it or settled and you look at our team it's like more or less every position midfield on left on right or front it's like from back to front apart from Brad Collins obviously and Woodrow everything, everybody else seems to be like in and out in and out at the side you know what I mean and like I said under Ishmael your midfield were more or less sorted, your defence were more or less sorted, apart from odd, you know, Sibic or Saul Bauer. Mm. And, you know, up front, that were it. But it, you had that continuity there, whereas, like we've just been saying, yeah, you can't you can't form a relationship, you can't form an understanding with a player 
if you no. in one seat uh, in one game out, out to another, can you? So no. Um, so do you yeah. Back in the, do you remember back in the day when you used to? I, I don't know if they still do it or not. I used to mm. get so uh, whenever I used to come up to the games, I used to get the Ocal Review program, mm-hmm. and in the back they always had uh, the, the fixtures. And then the team lineup features the fixtures. Yeah. And they always used to be pretty much the same, you know, number one through to number 11, pretty much always the same lineup. You could have copied and pasted it, couldn't you? <laughs> you could have done. You could have yeah. exactly done that, you know, and that's when you get consistency. Yeah. And, you know, I know it's a different it's a different game now, but you still need that consistency. You still need to know your team and have the same players playing in week in, week out mm-hmm. until they can get that relationship. They know exactly what they're doing. And so... Um, Gomez gets the ball, he immediately knows where Britain's going or where Styles is going. He doesn't have to look, he knows what's going on. They've got that relationship and they've played, you know, several several games together. You, you know what they're doing, you get that connection. And yes. we haven't got that. The amount of stray passes and people not knowing where they're going, it's it's and it's, it's basic passes and all, isn't it? It's like basic simple balls, isn't it? Yeah, you see it. Yeah. They're just not they're just there's no communication with with each other, mm. you know, and it's just silly little passes going astray. You know, Woodrow's run off this way instead of that way. Or, you know, Britain's not carried on his run. Yeah. But, you know, you get the relationships and you know what players are going to do. It's that understanding, and, isn't it? Yeah, you get the fluidity then as well. We just seem to be stop, start, stop, start. There's yeah. no sort of like Collins rolls the ball out to someone who passes to midfield, who passes across to Britain, mm. who carries on. It's very rare that we get uh, possession from the back and turn it into some sort of attacking chance. Mm. You know, it's it's either recycled ball or it's, you know, it's up to halfway, it's played back, it's back up to halfway, played across. It's there's, there's no there's no fluidity, there's no there's no momentum. It's sort of like you 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 charge out to midfield and you stop. Yeah. You know, I find that really frustrating. You you look at different teams, you know, they just keep going. You know, they, they get the ball, but they run with it. We've got no per, we've got nobody apart from I say a door when he's 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 on form. He can he can take players on. Uh, Gomez looks like he can take players on, but mm. only to a not in the same sort of manner that players like Adam Hamill could, yeah. you know, or, or Clint Marcel. You know, those sort of players he used to get the ball and he used to take it past. You know, several players we haven't got anyone really that you think give the ball to them and they'll create something for us. And I was believing we, all like that for a while. And I've always believed in all. You you probably agree on this is that. When you run at defenders, defenders hate it because they don't yeah. know what to do. And if you go down in danger in penalty box, you potentially veer to get either a free kick to start side box or a penalty inside. And for me, I'd, I'd love like such as a, a, your Britons to take it on, but it seems to get ball and play it and want to get shot. I'd love yeah. him to take it down, not just cross it in, but cut inside and, and run at him. But it seems to be it's like an opportunity. Give me it, I'll get shot. Give me it, get shot. And it's like dead ball and we're back on back foot again. Like you've just said, yeah, like a Marcel or an Amel, we got it, looked up, we took a run for it. Yeah, we might have lost possession or we might have took a tumble and gone down, but it's up in their third, not not back straight on, really not on retreat. And that's where we've been caught out a lot of times, like you just said, yeah. Yeah, some managers have got this um, this way of playing and um, a friend of mine, um, a lad was playing um, in the, um, I think it was the under-17s for, for Cardiff City. I'm not sure who the, the manager was for them at the time, but he gave them a two-second maximum limit so that keep that ball you know, in possession of the ball. He said, you have the ball for any more than two seconds, he says, and you're going to get fined for it all, not fined all. So, so there was some in. Hmm. He said, you don't hold on to that ball longer than two seconds. You can't go on a, a run in two seconds. Bad, you know, a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of managers want this sort of like attractive football with a quick pass in and all yeah. that. You know, and it, yeah, it looks nice sometimes if you've got the players to do that. Hmm. But it's also nice to see players taking other players on. Oh yeah. And if you run in, if you run in at defenders, you know they're they're running, they're sort of like running backwards, and you know they the, 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 when we run, at, we don't well, we don't run at defenders, but when we go towards defenders, they just stood there. Yeah. You know, if you run at them, they're they're, they're backing off. You know, yeah. they're looking this way and looking that way, and we, we we don't seem to do that. We just seem to try and pass it around. We don't try and you know Check move it anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's lack of creativity doing that and lack yeah. of communication because no one knows what anyone's doing. So they just try and pass it. They see someone over the other side of the box and yeah, I'll pass it to them. I'll see it. where they are. It's no, it's it. Bad, it? But we, then we haven't got the players to to play that sort of football. That's the only problem. We've not had one since Adam Hamill that True. can actually run at players and 
you know, you watch the, the goals on Twitter when they show in highlights of the games, past yeah. games, and they'll Hamill's goals. He's always picking the ball up in his own half and running that. Um, Jim O'Brien was another one who could get the ball and he could go on the run right the way at the pitch. Yeah. We sound got any players like that anymore. It's a shame, isn't it? It's a shame mm. because I think not only is it, you know, something different to watch and it, you know, putting pressure on Ben, but it's to get fans get fans going and all, wouldn't it? You know, that, that maze run and that run. Paddy McCullough, you know, yeah. another one against Jeff Wednesday when he jinking in inside and out. You know, you, you go back to like your, your Chris Waddles and your Glenn Addles and it, it's entertainment and it's a danger, it's a threat. You know, Matt Leticia, another and all great and dribbles and but it's and like you just said, it's like a dying art, isn't it? It's, it's not happening that much in, in league, in, in, in game anymore. The thing is, we had a lot of bad weather recently as well. And if you're trying to play the ball in the air in bad weather, it can end up going anywhere. Yeah, I know if your pitch is saturated, you can't you can't do the, the a lot of the passing on the ground is difficult to judge. You know, even running at players can be difficult. But if you've got windy conditions, say, then you want to keep the ball down on the deck because you, mm. you try passing it and go anywhere. Yeah, and we've seen where it where it goes where we try what? with them passes. A lot the amount of wayward <laughs> passes I've seen this season are just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. lottery. Um, mm. So going back to formation, Ben, um, what would you what would your lineup be? Uh, well, I'd um, I'd, I'd like in, I'd like to see four at the back again because I think it works. Mm. It worked well against Stuttersfield, although West Brom are a completely different team. Mm. You know, it's then it's fitting fitting Britain and Styles into that yeah, that's it, formation. It? it doesn't. It's this difficult with that. Was there was that the one Britain was out that game? The one against Stuttersfield. Which game he, did he miss? He missed. Yeah, he missed a game, didn't he? Because uh, he had it played the system. A current who played who played in the back four now against Stuttersfield. But we had but William, uh, we had Williams, Jordan Williams, sorry, uh, Alec Anderson, and I believe it was what it Kitchen. I think yeah, I think that's the. Uh, so I'd probably put Britain in there. I'd have you know playing the back four. I'd probably have Britain. I'd have Anderson, Helic, and Kitchen. So I think Kitchen he got the potential to play centre back or left back, mm. and I think he. You know, he's the amount of times he's saved our ass this season with some of his challenges. You know, and he's he's only going to get better. My only worry with Kitchen is he likes to get forward a bit, and mm. you know the, the the way we lose possession. And if you're playing against a team that can hit quick on the break, then you're missing someone out of place at the back. Then yeah, but Ashley Cole was the same for for Chelsea and and England. He used to get the ball and you know run off at the pitch lose possession and then you know they've got the right wing completely free to uh, to attack to attack England then or or Chelsea whoever you're playing against. Mm. So um as much as I like seeing defenders get forward, you know, we need to limit what you're doing, especially yeah. when you can't retain possession like we seem to have so much trouble with. But yeah, Britain, Anderson, Helic, and Kitchen. Um else would I I'd, I'd have Gomez in there. Mm. See, the, mid, the midfield is a difficult bit for me yeah. because you know Gomez has he, he's been playing really well. I would put Styles in there in midfield on the left of midfield. I think um, you've got such as like Palmer, Benson, aren't you? Neither of those have been really. I mean, at the start of the season, Benson impressed me, but mm. he seems to have gone off the boil since he came back from that spell where he was out. Mm. He just doesn't seem the same player. And Palmer, he's just so inconsistent. He can have mm. a really good game or a really bad game. Yeah. And you just went missing so much on Saturday. You know, we forget you were playing at times. Same with mm. the door. Um, yeah, the midfield's a problem still. It, it, we definitely need something, something doing there. Some, some other out, brought it? in. So I styles, styles. Gomez, I'd, I'd have, I'd, if Woodrow was not fit, even if he is fit, I'd, I'd give him a rest, you know, mm. I'd have, I'd like to see Cole start, I'm not sure what's happening with Cole, you know, I've seen him play at the start of the season, he was appalling, but the last few times I've seen him, he's had some really good games, Yeah, I'd like to see him, I'd like to see a secker. I'd give um, Bobia a start as well, I don't know what's happening with him, he's 
What's he had? Two substitute appearances? Two substitute, substitute appearances. And apparently he got laughed off against the uh, Sheffield United game. And reports of that went got back to Poya. And since then, he's, he's just like left him out. So I don't know what that is. See, he, he's, he looks big and you've just got a chance to see what he can do. Mm. You know, but... You've got Morris as well, haven't you? Morris. Forget about Morris. He was... Um, he proved, he proved the best player, actually, on yeah. apart from Collins on Saturday, Morris. Yeah, Morris. Morris is seeker. Morris is seeker Cole. All right, and we're not sure what's happening with Obi. Hmm. And then... Who's the other one? Who else we put in? you got Adebayejo, you could have Freezer. Freezer's another one been in and out at side, hasn't he? Yeah, he's... <sighs> So you need someone in the in the middle of midfield, I think. I'd maybe give Benson a go and give him give him a start and see if that hmm. see if that does anything. Yeah. Collins, Britton, Anderson, Pellick, Kitchen, Gomez, Benson. Styles. Styles. And then up front I'd have um Morris, the seeker, and Cole. Yeah. You know, and just just go for it. You've got nothing to lose. You know, and I know people say it's like a, a free hit. Mm. You know, you're not expecting to get anything. Then it's not a free hit because you know, every game you know you've got to take seriously and you've got to do, do your very best. But if you're not expecting to get anything, just just go for it. Just give a good, good account for yourselves, show some passion, show some show some creativity, and just we we got the players to do it. Yeah. But you know. It's whether they will do it. It's under you know, Sky TV cameras and all, isn't it, on Friday night? So we never we never do well on Sky as well. So mm. yeah, we just we just got to go out and actually, you know, if we if we can get the passing back to the the standard it was against Huddersfield, you know, you know, we haven't got the players that can run it, uh, the players, so we're gonna have to make do with the passing. Uh, I'm not sure what the weather forecast is. Hopefully, it's gonna be okay. You mm. know, it's not gonna be a, a wet one. But we've got the players to, to to ping the ball about. We showed that against Huddersfield. Just Go out there and show them what we can do and just try and retain possession. Stop giving the yeah. ball away so cheaply. So it just yeah. gives the ball straight back to the opposition and they're straight on you again. And with a team like West Brom, you don't want to be under relentless attack from them because your defence can get absolutely knackered. That's what I was about to say. We want to take a game to them. We not allow them to play their game. We want to get in amongst them because you you know under Ishmael what's going to happen. Mm. We we let, let them play and... We're just going to get bombarded with that uh, style of play. We know yeah. we've seen it happen. Um, so yeah, I'm more, I'd like to see four at back. I've just got a feeling this is going to have three at back. I, I, just because I think it's such an like an unbalanced uh, with winging options, it just seems weird. I wanted to go to four, which he did. Well, I think it will Fulham away when he would have put stands and he uh, um, were like watching from stands, but we went back to a four via, then it went to four, then it went back to three, then it's like always actually calling the formation for this idea what what's happening. Uh, but yeah, I I agree. I want to go back to what you've just said there. Uh, four at bat, but I've just got a feeling he's going to play free, just basically because he's not confident or he ain't got skill. Uh, you know, players to fit him for uh, tasks. Uh, so we're going to go to the score prediction. This is going to be a good one. Um, obviously, we're wanting a win. I'm going to set to one Barnsley, but. I think I don't know if that's made all my heart, to be fair. But I think, to, I think that's, that's your heart summer. saying that. Yeah, yeah. Um, my heart says one nil to Barnsley. Mm. My my head says three one to West Brom. Yeah, yeah. The defense has been it's been worrying, you know, in in recent games. Um, it was shaky on on Saturday. Uh, Fulham, it was all over the shop, mm. and I think Fulham are going to be a. a West Brom are going to be a team similar in capability to Fulham, so you're going to have to be on top of your game. But I don't know if, if we let if we concede an early goal, you know, then I think yeah. that's going to be that's going to be it. And I think uh, if you probably similar in all day, we start off good for about 10, 15, maybe twenty mm-hmm. minutes, and then we just like run out of steam, we run out of ideas, then we start yeah. off pretty quick in the second half. But I think Luke said it and uh, some others have said it and all. We get to like 10, 15 minutes before end of game, at any game. We seem to be like running out of steam a bit and we seem, mm. it seems to be like backs against the wall, Alimo, and holding on and literally holding on to results. You know what I mean? So 
the fitness last season, you know, we, we could have oh. kept going for an extra half an hour last season. The fitness in the players yeah. was unbelievable. Yeah. We haven't got the same fitness this season. You, you're right, the last 10, 15 minutes, we're getting pulled all over the place. Yeah. And levels. You know, the fact it is, you had more substitutions last season as well, which mm. also helped. You know, it doesn't help when you've got to go back to three. But we managed before, you know, and um, yeah. we just need to get the, the players up to that level of fitness where they can keep going for you know, for 90 minutes for the majority of them. For you know, and then you can use your subs, but use your subs wisely. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. So I want to appreciate and say thanks today for joining me. It's been a pleasure. We'll have to get you on more often, mate. Uh, so, yeah. West Brom coming up. Uh, thanks for everybody for watching. Leave your comments and likes and shares and subscribe and all that normal stuff what we always say. Um, one thing to say, you Reds.